timing light to say the course is clear. Uh, go in your own time as soon as you uh, go, you cut the timing beam. And uh, 124 then sets us off in this class. Simon Deadman then in the way, Jap. Yesterday managed a 57.47. He's well up the hill now towards the uh, the carousel roundabout. There he goes then. Next car away will be Stuart Wright. He's gone. Stuart Wright was uh, going very quickly yesterday. 47.29. One of the quickest cars in the class. But meanwhile, Simon Deadman has got to the top in 56.52. This is Stuart Wright in the very attractive Cooper, the 125. Cooper Mark 11, by the looks of things, and uh, a car which at one point was fitted in the States with a with the big Chevrolet V8 engine in it, which seems almost unbelievable. 47 through 32, Stuart Wright then uh, goes quickest within three hundredths of a second of yesterday's best. Yesterday's time led by Mark Riley in the Creamer, and this going quickly is 126. You can see the driver hanging on to under the belly pan of the car. 126. That's Finley McIntosh in the Mark VI. The last uh, of these 500cc Coopers was made in about 1957 and then Formula Junior took over and uh, no longer bike engines but uh, either Ford or BMC engines for Formula Junior. But there's Jan Nietzsche, we've just looked at this car on the start line, immaculately presented but quick as well, Jan. It, it, it epitomizes what's known as cab forward with your feet yeah, well in front control. of the front axle line. So if you go off the track you want to make sure you're going backwards. Absolutely. Well, Jan Nish has got to the top in 47.54, 46.63 for uh, Finlay McIntosh. All arms and elbows and uh, very sideways. 46.63 is the second quickest 500 time we've seen all weekend. But, of course, we discount uh, Mark Riley's best from yesterday, the qualifying time in the Crema. Here's, uh, the, here's the keen special. I think if John Cooper saw this, he'd sue for breach of copyright because it's really a copy of the Cooper as quite a few of them were. Here's Mark Riley. We had a close look at the rear suspension of this car. Mark is always extremely quick, beautifully prepared, very nice guy. So this may well be the quickest of this class. And note how neat he is with the creamer. He's not throwing it around. It's all uh, nice and efficient. You drive them one-handed with one hand clinging to the side of the car. Yeah, niche 4754 in the 127 Star Ride. And Mark Riley goes top. 45.70, 45.70, almost a second clear of anybody else driving the Creamer then. 130, Mark Riley goes quickest. Alistair Dent had a very adventurous run yesterday in the Hornet. It stung him once or twice. He's being chased up by Richard De La Roche, who will be one of the quicker guys in the class. There is the Hornet on its steel wheels. One. At 47.85 for the Hornet. Richard in the Richard in the Mark V. Now he was a, a mechanic for uh, Lodge Corner Agencies up near Alden Park. Years and years ago. David Wynn Stanley's enterprise, a late and much missed David Wynn Stanley. That hatch in the very early days used to be anti clockwise, and Druids Hill didn't exist. And uh, so the, lots of the early Formula 3 races were there. Richard's finished, and he's followed yeah. by Alex Deuce Richard in Grant. the Mark V. Richard Grant went third quickest in the Keen Special, 47.11. What's Richard Dillaroche done? 47.55. 133 then. He's the last of our runners in the 500 class, this is, class 10. Yep, this is Nigel Chalice in 133. Towards the top, up from Romsey in Hampshire. 51-59 for Nigel Chalice, leaves him in eighth place. Brings us to class 11, sponsored by Cameron Engineering and Motorsports. 
which is the racing cars up to 1500cc and illustrates the revolution from the air-cooled Coopers.